How you doing? Today I'm Frankie G, the Cooking Cowboy. Today I'm going to be making for you some chili glazed pork ribs with a homemade spicy barbecue sauce. Alright, I'm also going to be making some wedged potatoes with some paprika, salt and pepper. And I'm also going to be making some corn, which I'm going to be spicing it up with a little bit of chili butter at the end of it. But I got to tell you, I'm hungry. And I don't want to wait three, four hours to make these ribs. So I'm going to show you the Instant Pot version of these ribs, alright? It can make this within an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. So let's get started. Let's go see the ingredients we're going to need to get this done. First and foremost, we need a nice rack of ribs, which I picked up today at Myers. Shout out to Myers. So what we're going to need for the dry rub is three tablespoons of packed light brown sugar, two cloves of garlic minced, two teaspoons of fresh thyme, three tablespoons of chili powder, some freshly ground black pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. So the ingredients we're gonna need for the homemade spicy barbecue sauce are one cup of ketchup, two tablespoons of light brown sugar, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of yellow mustard, one tablespoon of Tabasco sauce, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, one quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, one quarter teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, one quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and a half a teaspoon of ground oregano. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is get all the ingredients together for the dry rub. Now I can't remember them all, so what I'm going to be do is I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go off my sheet and I'm also going to be cutting all the ingredients in half because these ingredients are based on two racks of ribs and I'm only making one today. So let's do it. So the first thing we're going to do is get one and a half tablespoons of brown sugar. There's one. One and a half. Now we're going to take one clove of garlic and we're going to mince that in my fancy pants mincer here. Scrape that in there like that. I always like to go in and get whatever I can out of it. Drag it, get a little bit more out of it. So that's our one clove of garlic mince. So next we want to add one teaspoon of thyme. And there are about one, about one teaspoon. Put that off to the side. So now we want one and a half tablespoons of chili powder. So you're going to have equal parts chili powder and equal parts brown sugar. So now we got that done. Put that off to the side. So next we want to add a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. That'll do. Next comes a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. One quarter teaspoon. There we go. Put that away. And that's all we need. The flavor that's in this dry rub is to die for. I, I should package it and sell it. Make sure that everything's mixed well because I gotta tell you, the flavor of this dry rub is out of this world. So now that the dry rub is ready, let's get to the star of the show. I went and picked out a nice rack, a three pound rack of ribs. They're beautiful. So the first thing you need to do is remove the membrane from the bottom of the ribs. It's a thin layer of skin that just needs to be removed. 
Some people say I just poke holes in it, but I've always found it better to remove it. So let's turn this over. Now what you need is a little bit of a paper towel, like a spoon or, or a butter knife. I got both. I like to start at the smaller end because it just makes it easier to take it off. So you gotta get that membrane started. Once you get it started, and I'm gonna turn this this way because I'm a righty, and I'm gonna go right to left. And there it comes. Look at that. Beautiful. Get rid of it. So once that's done, now we put our dry rub. Gives it a nice color as well as some really great flavor. Make sure you do both sides. And don't be chintzy. Make sure you use it all because that's why you made it. So now we've got the ribs ready to go. We're going to push them off to the side. And we're going to bring in the other star to show. The Instant Pot. Remove the top. Get the accessories out you don't need. You will need the trivet, so might as well just leave that in there. Put these off on the side. So I'm going to face the pot straight towards you guys so you can see how it works. The next thing we need to do is add the apple juice. So I've got a half gallon here, but I'm only going to be using about half of so I'm going to be using about a quart. Just to about the bottom of the trivet. Pour that in. Just to the bottom of the trivet. So it's going to look something like this. So it's going to look something like that. Right to the bottom of the trivet. We're going to add some apple cider vinegar. I have a little bit left here. So I'm going to put that in. That gives it a little bit of a bite. Also, I want to add some liquid smoke. Oh, the aroma. Yeah, a little bit more. So let's get that put away. So the next thing is, let's bring our ribs and put them in. Now what I like to do is I like to take the ribs and I just like to wrap it around with the top side facing the outside part is more toward the center. We take those and we wrap them around, stand it up on its edge. Just like that. Let's get a look at that. Just like that. Alrighty. Again, let's get let's get this off to the side. Put the lid on. So I'm going to be moving this over here, so we're going to have to change the camera angles because my outlets are on this side of the island. Okay, so now that I got the Instant Pot moved over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be setting it for 32 minutes on high pressure cook. So 
So now I'm setting it for pressure cook. It's actually at 32 minutes. Pressure's on high. You could switch that to low or high. We're leaving it at high. You're going to be leaving that at high. Then with delay, we have no delay. Delay on, delay off. We're leaving it at off. And keep warm, we're going to be leaving that at off. All right. So now it's set. So now all we have to do is hit start. So now it's on. So now we need 10 to 20 minutes to let this build up pressure. Different ways to release the pressure. There's a quick release and a slow release. A quick release is once the 32 minutes is up, you hit the relief valve and it just lets out the steam instantaneously. There's also the slow release. The slow release is you do nothing. You wait. So I'm going to wait the 10 extra minutes. So we're saying 32 minutes of cook time in the pressure cooker, another 10 minutes for a slow release. That's 42 minutes. And then we're going to say 10 to 20 minutes. So that's 52, 62. That's about an hour. So about an hour to cook the ribs in the Instant Pot. So now we have some time since the Instant Pot is preheating. We want to get other things done. Let's get the oven set at 375 so we could start getting the potatoes ready. So now let's get started on the potatoes. I'm going to grab them real quick. So next we're going to get the pan, some salt, pepper, and olive oil. So let's get them cut up in wedges. Just leave the skin on or take them off. I prefer the skin on. Okay, so now the potatoes are all cut into wedges. So the next step is to add some olive oil, salt, pepper, and paprika. A little bit of EVOO. Whoops. Some salt. And don't be shy, huh? Some pepper. And some paprika. Paprika gives it some nice color. But you gotta be careful because like ground pepper, paprika is a red pepper. So you don't you don't want to go too crazy. You want to mix them up so they're evenly coated. A little more paprika. That's it. Now these are ready to go. I'm going to push these off on the side, wait for that oven to hit 375, and then we're going to do the barbecue sauce. So now the oven just went off almost at the same time as the Instapot started to actually do the pressure cooking. So now I'm going to just throw them potatoes in the oven and let them do their thing. So far everything's going to come out almost at the same time. This is going perfect. Now that I've got the potatoes in the oven, I've got the ribs cooking in the Instant Pot. I'm going to clean up a little bit here, and then I'm going to go back and start making the barbecue sauce. So the next step you want to do is get the barbecue sauce. Now this is the easiest of all of them, because all you do is you take all the ingredients, combine them all together at one time, bring it to a simmer for about five minutes, and that's it. You're done. So let's start off with a cup of ketchup. And 
here's our ketchup. Next, you want to add two tablespoons of light brown sugar. One, two. This is done. So now we need two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And I like to use two different sets of measuring spoons, one for the dry and one for the wet. This works out better that way. Ooh, fresh new one. Just one tablespoon. There's the second tablespoon. And we could put that away. Now we want two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. One. Two. So now we want one tablespoon of yellow mustard. I like to mix that up good. One tablespoon of Tabasco sauce. Those two can go away. Next we want one teaspoon of smoked paprika. Push that to the side. One quarter teaspoon of salt. And again, what type of salt do I use? Pink Himalayan sea salt. Quarter teaspoon of that. And you want a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You like it spicy here. and a half a teaspoon of ground oregano. One, two. So that's it, all the ingredients are there together. We could now put all our other ingredients, our spices away, and then we just mix it together. Let's get, just put this on the side, but let's get a little taste first, even though it's not cooked. Mm, man, that's got a nice little kick to it. I love it. We don't even need to simmer that yet because that goes on at the very end on the ribs. So then they go in the oven for three to five minutes under broil, and we'll be all done. Did you hear that? That's the timer for the Instant Pot. You know what time of that is? Time to finish off this wine. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to set the timer for 10 minutes because again, I want to do a slow release. I could release it now, but if you do a slow release, it'll allow it to cook just a little bit more and soften up. So after the 10 minutes is done, what we'll do is we'll release any of the pressure that's left. So then what we'll turn around and do is put them on a pan, get our barbecue sauce on them, get them in the oven under broil for about three to five minutes, and we're good to go, G to G. So let me get that pan prepared so I'm ready ahead of time. So I got a nice baking sheet here. I'm gonna lay down some heavy duty foil on it. And now we're gonna st I'm gonna start heating up the barbecue sauce, getting that ready. Get 
Give that a little bit of a stir. So, now that you just heard that, that was the timer for 10 minutes. Let's go shut the timer off. Now at this point, you want to do the release of the pressure. Now be careful because even though it's been a slow release, there's still pressure. So, so we have to relieve any pressure that's left. So we just press this button here. And that will relieve the pressure. Now we have to wait till that's done. Okay, so now the pressure is pretty much relieved. We could take the top off. Look at that, huh? Oh, it looks beautiful. So we're gonna need two sets of tongs because this truly is full off the bone already. And we wanna try to transfer it to this pan without, without it falling apart. Sometimes it don't work, but let's see. Give this a turn. Look at that. When I say fall off the bone, was I kidding? I was not kidding. There's that part. Let's get this trivet out of the way. And get the last part. It truly is fall off the bone. That's not too bad. So now that I've got it out there, I want to shut the barbecue sauce off, bring it over here, and put the barbecue sauce on it. So now that the barbecue sauce has been uh, simmering for about five minutes, I'm going to take it, stir it up one more time, and then I'm going to brush it on and put this baby in the oven about three to five minutes under broil. I'm gonna leave the potatoes in there, but I'm gonna transfer them to the bottom so they can crisp up a little bit at the same time. All right, let's stir it up. Let's brush this on liberally. Can I actually brush something liberally? I don't know. Don't be shy, get that on there. So now that I put it on broil, I want to move those racks around a little bit so I can get this thing up on the upper part of the rack. I also want to get the corn out and get the corn into the microwave for five minutes. So let's get these babies in the oven. I set the timer for two minutes and then we'll take them, we'll turn them around and get it in another two minutes the other way. So now I'm going to put some butter in a pan, melt it up, and add some chili powder to that. A little bit of salt and pepper. I'm just trying something new out. Let's see how it works out. You hear that? That's two and a half minutes. Let's go turn around and turn it the other way. Now I just took the ribs out, turned them around, put them back in the oven for another two or three minutes, and at the end, everything should come together beautiful. Let's see how this works out. Now I just added a little bit of chili powder to the melted butter. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper and mix that in with the corn. And see how it comes out. Let's get it done. So now I'm going to get the ribs out of the oven as well. Those ribs are looking beautiful. Let's see these potatoes first. Not beautiful. Firm. Well done, perfectly done. Flavor is excellent. So, let's add the butter to the corn.
Bird's Eye Steam Fresh. Shout out to Bird's Eye. And we're going to add our butter, which is infused with some chili powder. Some salt, some pepper. Give that a stir. Push that off to the side. And now for the piece de resistance, the ribs. Let's get them back on the cutting board. Let it fall off the bone or what? There we go. All right. It's the moment of truth. We have our ribs done to perfection. Look at this. They look beautiful. Let's try a taste. That's what's most important. Let's get our plate. Look at this. Fall off the bone. Oh my God. These are so tender. The barbecue sauce is spicy, tangy, and yet a little sweet at the same time. It's amazing. Oh my God. These are so tender. You can't go wrong. Oh. Let's get a little bit of that corn too. All right, let's see. The corn tastes like corn. A little bit spicy. Not bad for an experiment. And potatoes, like I said, nice little wedges. Cooked all the way through. The potatoes are actually perfect in texture. The flavor's good, all in all. A beautiful meal. So now you know how to make Instant Pot ribs. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you get notifications the next time I got a video coming out. Until next time, Frankie G, the Cooking Cowboy, signing off. Hasta mañana, baby.